Happy Friday. I hope you're doing well today. And uh, I guess actually welcome to my stream, Nick. Uh, I don't think you've got to join in before. And it's great that you're finally going back to the day shift and not having <laughs> to stay up all night working. But yes, welcome. It's Friday. I hope everyone had a wonderful week, be it at work, playing games, or whatever you get to do during the weekend. That you have great plans for the weekend as well. So let me know how it sounds right now if the music's too loud, too low. I'm making some slight adjustments at the moment. That level feel looks like it should be good, but just let me know. So yeah, it's Friday. Uh, this is unboxing the week that I do. Hey oh, welcome, welcome. How are you today? The game covered. Uh, your stream was a lot of fun to get to join in as I had a little bit of time to jump in and watch and hang out with y'all as y'all were streaming right after I got home from work and I was preparing for this. Um, it's wonderful that y'all get to join me and everything that y'all have been doing in the community with your charity stream last weekend, all the other streams. It's great to have you here with us today. So, um, like I was saying, Fridays are unboxing week where I get to hang out with chat, just see what's been going on during the week, and we get to unbox a game or two while we have time. So let me know how your week was, has been, what you've been up to, what you've been playing, or what you plan to play. Talk about games. Uh, last night I got to hang out with the charity board gamer again for the after the show stream, and we played for Tessa's game that is currently on Kickstarter called Book of Villainy, where you're basically villains trying to write really bad books, where every chapter is something kind of terrible. And But you're kind of really bad at being villains, and so you're going around trying to avoid the hero and going around a Rondell system. So it's a really cool game with kind of, kind of throwback art that they use comic book style art. So... I would recommend checking it out on Kickstarter right now if that style of game interests you. And of course, Tuesday nights, we've been continuing our D&D &D game. Well, that's fine if you can't stay for too long, I understand. Um, you know what? You all deserve a shout out. Let's see if I get this right. Because you all are amazing. And so... Everyone should go check your, your channel and follow the game cupboard as well. So ho hopefully I can join in on more of your streams, be, be it playing games, hanging out in your chat and, and other things. And look forward to being able to possibly even play Blood on a Clock Tower with y'all again. That was a lot of fun. Of course. For one, you more than deserve the shutout because on Monday for my first affiliate stream y'all were there at the very beginning and my first sub how can i not shout you out you're such a great supporter constantly rating me and bringing me more views and followers and just being so supportive i it's, of course i'll share the love back I, how can i not so let's see what we have on the table today so yeah i know the game corporate was asking earlier on their stream while i was in their chat what i had done box today and I did mention I had four horror-themed games that whoever's here in chat now gets to help pick what I open next. So I have Terror Below. Uh, I don't know a huge amount about it, but kind of the Sandworm style. I believe it might be based off the movie uh, with worms or whatever. I might be wrong. We got The Haunted Mansion. Of course, everyone knows that from Disney. This is from Funko Games. Then we have Horrified with all the classic movie monsters. And then Final Four, which is an Arkham Horror-based game from Fantasy Flight. So, uh, Nick, I know you haven't been here before for my Friday unboxing of the week, but typically I'll provide about four or five options and chat gets to help pick which one I'll unbox. I try to make a theme each week, like one week was all about expansions. Last week was all about games that families can play because they're all ages 8 and up. So they're good for if you had kids. But now, today, it's kind of slightly horror-themed. Of course, some of these kids can play too. But I figured, why not? 
So if y'all have a suggestion which ones you want to see, let me know. And we'll end up opening it up on stream, going through the components, and just talking about what we find in the box. Now, I have played Horrified before, so I technically know it's in the box. But it was so good a game, I wanted to pick it up myself. So, what games do y'all have planned for, I guess, this weekend? Anything y'all are planning to play? I know I am planning to learn uh, Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. So, David says Terrible. Is David still with y'all right now, Nick? I thought he was going home by now. Or y'all all watch, hanging out watching together. But that is a vote so far, so... It's going to be hard to do something different unless we get more votes. But sometimes it's all it takes, one vote. Uh, but yeah, so I'll be learning Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, because next weekend, me and Chris have a week, uh, a big charity event stream that we have going on. Okay, so David is still with you all until Sunday. Awesome. Oh, and we got a vote for Horrified. See if we get any other votes that kind of split the tie um but yeah so next weekend during father's day weekend friday saturday and sunday with the charity board game we'll be doing another charity event raising money for lacuna loft which is i believe now changing their name to cactus cancer society or something like that but we'll have links while we're streaming for them but we're doing instead of a straight 24-hour stream we're, we've started to split up into multiple days. So it'll be Friday night, I believe from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. in the morning. Saturday is going to be like 10 a.m. to possibly midnight. And then Sunday we're going to be doing about four hours in the afternoon. And so if you're in the Discord with us, we have some open slots for some of the different games because we do some digital games, some tabletop physical games. And then Sunday is going to be D&D &D based. And Game Covered is hoping to play Hughes and Cues in Match 5 tomorrow on stream. Oh, both great games. I've played Hughes and Cues on stream multiple times with Chris. Match 5 we've done once. And then playing your first game of Destinies. Ooh, I've heard great things about Destinies. Um, I should get a chance to play that soon as uh, Chelsea of Chel Chelka Loves Board Games. Uh, we have a in-person game night every week. And they were able to get a review copy. So I'm planning to go try that out pretty soon. And they've really been enjoying it. So I've heard great things about it. So do we have a deciding vote on the which y'all want to see unopened? Because right now we're tied. One for Terror Below and one for Horrified. And Nick, what about you and David and Carla? Are y'all playing anything right now? Anything? Well, anything you can talk about, at least. Because I know there's some new designs y'all are working on that can't be talked about. Well, Spitzka, we might have time for both. So, we might get to open both. So, you can see Horrified as well. So, I don't, I don't want to just go with the other one. Like, that, that's part of why I let chat choose. Is we, get, we eventually get to see all the games. Because actually both of these have been on the list before. They didn't get open. So they come back to the table a couple of weeks later. They always come back until they get opened. And then, of course, everything I do, I try to then upload to YouTube later with occasionally some small editing just to make it run smoother. Okay, so we got another vote for Horrified. Oh, yeah, the artwork in it's great. So sorry, David. It looks like you've been outvoted. So if we have time, we'll get to Terror Below. Or you can join me one of the next times when we do open it. So we'll go with Horrified first, and then if we have time, we'll jump back to do more. And of course, now with the games out of the way, you get to see my fun playmat. I still love my custom playmats that I ordered. Where did I put my knife? Right there. Because um, I have like the gray one, the white one. Uh, just how much they pop on the table. I really love. And hopefully y'all enjoy seeing it too. So. 
at that. Look at the box. Horrified. So, yeah, so it looks like the game cover loves the art. So I think y'all have played it on stream. I believe I watched y'all play it on stream. Um, who has seen it, who has not seen this game? Let me know. But this is a one to five player game. It says ages 10 and up. Younger could play it as long. It's more about the horror theme and that some younger kids could get a little bit of nightmares. But since it's co-op, you can easily play with younger if you choose to. So you've seen in the stories. Well, hopefully I can talk a little bit about the gameplay as we're unboxing everything. And you can decide if you actually want to pick it up for yourself. Oh, we're starting with the warning. <laughs> so we feel it would be a little unkind to present this game without just a word of friendly warning friendly warning. You are about to unfold one of the strangest tales ever told. We think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to will. We warned you. So that is actually on the bottom of the board. So just the way they packed it. <laughs> so I'll show off the board in a little more detail in a minute after we get through what's in the box. But uh, we'll leave it under so you can just kind of see it around everything. So we got our instruction manual right here. Uh, let's see. Now, bear in mind, the first time I played this, I played it with a couple other players that had not tried it before either. And we rushed through the instructions. And we I had to play it three times that night because we made too, too many assumptions on rules because we, we, we skimmed it, we thought we understood, and kept messing something up. So do be prepared to read the rules and verify things. Otherwise, the game will be a lot harder to play. Uh, so yeah, it talks about all the components, which is nice, very clear cut, and you can see exactly how many pieces there are because it gives you counts which is always really helpful. I know on occasion, games might be missing something after you played a few times, if you accidentally lose a piece. So if you go, so you can double check what you have in the box before you start playing, that you can actually play the full game and not be missing pieces. Uh, goes through the setup, uh, a, a pretty good layout. It can be a little wordy for some people. Some people are used to a bit more pictures or larger pictures. It kind of goes through your turn, tells you how to set the difficulty um, from kind of easier games to harder games. So that's how you can actually play with younger kids more easily, or if you're really experienced players, you can just jump into the thick of it. Uh, it talks about what you do on your turns, of course, um, what the items can do and what they mean, uh, what the monsters do, because in this game you're trying to basically defeat so many monsters and they each have special ways to defeat them so on your turn you're kind of moving around the board picking up items uh potentially dropping them off at certain locations occasionally trying to save some townsfolk and protect them uh, it talks how the, the game ends goes over more details of each of the monsters which we will show off those boards as we get to them Appendix with clarifications, which I highly recommend you read if you're playing, because this does help some of the rules that we kind of skimmed and misread. And it talks about rules for solo play. So I'm thinking at some point I'll get this to the table on a Monday night stream and play through it on, as a solo game. And whoever is in chat with me can help me decide the moves. So it'll be kind of a modified solo. I'll be playing as a solo person, but everyone's still co-oping it, so it works well in that manner. So we've got a couple of punch boards. Now these punch boards have been wrapped all together instead of just being left in the box without a plastic film. Which some people may say that's unnecessary to do. Um, it also depends on how it's been manufactured, if it's a different facility. So, and then if it was shipped and then packed somewhere else. 
there's multiple reasons to, to do this or not do it this way. Um, I won't pretend to know the reason for this exact game. I probably could have cut it more. There we go. To the trash pile behind me. Okay, so we have four different punch boards. Uh, we got a lot of the different tokens, uh, the items that you're picking up along the way. You get your special character cards to keep in front of you to kind of remind you of who you are and your special abilities. Let's see how these punch. So pretty smooth. Um, the tabs on them are relatively small, if almost non-existent. So they're going to come out pretty easily with very minimal tearing. It's not a super thick punch board, but of course more than adequate for, what, for the types of pieces it is. And I'll go over, I'll show these pieces on the close up in just a second after I get them all punched. So we can go over the, the characters you can play as. So let me switch so you can see these as I go over the details now. So, and they each have different colors. They each have different pictures on them. So they're pretty easy to identify as you play because you're also going to have a standee with, with the same picture on them. So they each have a special action. They have the name of who they are. And they also have a starting location over here on the board for these different locations. Easily named, easy to find. And then some of them have a different number of actions on their turn. So it's, e so it's easy, easy to read on the top of their player card. Uh, they are just one-sided. No extra special art on the back. But then again, it's not needed because these just kind of stay on the table as you play. So we have the Explorer with the special action of Place Your Hero in any non-water space. Which, it's good it clarifies that, but typically heroes can't move into the water for the most part anyway. We got our courier, uh, can place your hero in any space with another hero, which that can kind of, that's a, a special fast move actually, because like say that hero is across the board somewhere, typically each, each adjacent city touching is one movement, kind of one action. So that's kind of a fast move possible if you're playing that character. We have our professor who can move any hero or villager one space. So, so say you have something somewhere else on the board that you're trying to move an earlier turn, it's their turn, and instead of waiting for a couple turns for the next player to be able to move, you can help them move around. We have an inspector. You can place your hero in any non-order space with the monster, kind of a monster chaser in a way, uh, to jump to those monsters if you have the required items to deal with them. We have a mayor. No true special um, action ability, but instead of three or four action, they always get an extra action, so they're at five actions. So in, in a way, it is a special action, just it's extra instead of special. We have our scientist, and you may add one to the strength of any item you use because all the items have numbers on them. And so some of the monsters depend on the numbers on them and or combining numbers together. So have, being able to add to the item count or the number on the item is helpful as you play. And that's, last but not least, we have the archeologist who can pick up items from an adjacent space, which helps not have to travel as far to go pick them up because typically you can only pick up if you're standing on the same space as that item. So let's punch some of these other things out. So we have a couple of these location style tiles. Um, I believe, I'm trying to remember if these are monster specific or which, because I don't think we use them in the game we, we ended up playing. Uh, so we have like the museum, solve a mystery, uh, basically using yellow items to move scarabs, make as many moves as item strength. We have a precinct. To solve it, you need certain items of those colors. And then we have the laboratory. Yeah, so I believe these belong with a certain monster. 
the way it's set up because a lot of times that solve stem is shown on the monster cards. So I'll start punching these little standees. As you can see, they punch really well, easily. Very little tearing at all. You can see it's printed on both sides to help protect it. Something I like to do because it's fun to do. You get to. I'm gonna pause the music real quick, and I'll let y'all listen to the the crisp snap. Uh, helps you hear just how cleanly those are popping out when you're punching them. Now, like I talked about, all of these standees have the exact same art style that's on the player cards, and they will end up in these clear bases, which I'll show you how well they fit into those in a moment. And then we got some, uh, oh, what do they call them, the villagers, or blanking on what they call the, yeah, villagers. So that basically the townsfolk. They have village. Uh, they have their special names. So it's another punch board down. So let's see what's on this board. So we have a camp space. So we have some of the coffins that I know go with the Dracula monster. Yeah, really diverse set of characters, um, both in the monsters and in who you can play as, which was really nice. So since I haven't played with all the different monsters, I can't remember where all these tokens, which ones they all go to, but still cool to see the different artwork. Like they took the time to like show the bubbles in that potion even. So kind of like I was saying, it's more the artwork and the theme that may not be as great for the younger players um, that are under the 10. But like I know kids splaining, they have their two boys. Um, I know at least one is under 10 and they have played this together and it's something they talked about in one of their videos. Can kids play and is it a good fit for certain ages? And they bring up the theme, but overall how you play, the younger kids can easily join in. I do a little bit of clear space so you can see all these other tokens. So these are kind of thematic and the, the art for the tokens you pick up. But you can also see that all these token items have both a location and they also like have a little name for themselves. But it's more the location that's important because all these tokens are actually, uh, you can you can use like a just a bag or whatever but they get shuffled up because since they're double-sided it's hard to shuffle into them random without something to draw them out of but they get randomly drawn at certain times and then placed at the location shown on it and so they're kind of I I'm not gonna say evenly distributed around the board but they are set to be around the board so they're you do have to move around to pick up particular items that you need for the different numbers and colors to defeat the different monsters in particular ways. So we have yellow, red, and blue items, all of varying numbers. I'm seeing two, three, four, five, and there's also six that I can see. I'm not sure if it goes higher than six though. I'm seeing a couple of ones as well. almost done punching and then I'll move on to the different standees which are really cool because they have a lot of fun details that they've done for the little miniatures 
that you play as. Now some people will probably go and paint these. I'm sure some have already painted them and posted pictures online somewhere. Um, but it is nice that the, each different character is already um, made in a different color. So they're easy to find on the board. So that's going to be this baggie of miniatures. So I'll show those off next. Um, so actually these are, I stand corrected, and these are actually the monsters on the board. But then again, these are easy to see when playing and spot as they have to move around just as much as your characters. Uh, let's see, is this, yeah, so we have in this blue plastic, let's see if it has the name on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't actually put the name on the bottom. I believe that one was the Invisible Man. Let's see if we can. They pretty are good put a good amount of detail in these miniature models. And so you could easily go print them even more, or paint them at a lot more detail or leave them as they are. Dracula, of course, red for the the blood he needs. Shows him with his cape open. I believe uh, uh, Swamp Thing. Is that what they named him? Uh, I'll have to look in a second. And purple. Uh, we had the Wolfman. And then I believe this was the Mummy. And then we have Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. So let's grab some of those um, character standees. So first off, all of the player standees get to go into color specific bases. So not only does your character have a specific color, so say you're playing as the archaeologist that was yellow, so this one with a yellow picture, but then you also get the yellow standee to, to stand it in. So we'll show how well they go into the standee if they're too tight, too loose. Because I opened a game last week, it was a little too tight, they started tearing the print. So that's something I like to show off if that's something you care about. We're just going to do it like most people would put it together, you're just going to standard pressure fit. Now the nice thing about these being a solid color, if it does start to tear, you're not going to see it once it's on, on it. The clear ones, if they tear, could pose a slight issue on what you see in that regard. Yeah, so I'll put all those stand, uh, stands on those later. Let's get some of the villagers and we'll look at the clear. So of course, like I said, these are clear. And the villager. So that was actually a really nice fit. Good pressure fit, no tearing. Like tugging on it, it's not going to slide out very easily. I'm sure I could eat, I could take it off and not tear it, but I have no need to take it off now that it's it's on there. So you can tell that fits really nicely, nice and snug, but not so much that you're going to risk tearing it and just destroying your components as you assemble it. So that, that's something you're going to be doing first game is putting all of those villagers on these standees. But you can also do it as you start to play and you're and you're told the first one to put on the board as well. So next in the box we have the custom dice. Three custom dice. And these have some blanks, some exclamations, and kind of these star shapes. And these dice are actually actually get rolled uh, in specific ways on the monster's turn, determining if they move, if they attack, and do other things, or basically nothing. Uh, but it's based on the card that's drawn and the monster itself. So there's there's kind of a combination of 
knowing those symbols and how they interact with the rest of the stuff. Okay, next up we have a deck of cards. Now, for those who have been here before, y'all like to know that I ch always check for a quick release on these decks of cards, so you don't have to take a knife to it. So I'm going to quickly look real quick. Okay, so it's, it's not, it doesn't have the like the gold line that's easy to see in it, but it, uh, the first way I could tell is it, there's a line that almost looks perforated. I don't know if you can see it on camera. You can kind of see it right there. So then I saw the peel edge on this side. So that is the nice thing about the pack like that. You don't have to risk taking a knife to it and accidentally cutting a card in any way. So in this we have two different decks. We have the dark deck and we have, well, the light deck. And then on top of that we have reference cards. So there's actually five reference cards so you can play up to the five players without having to share a reference card and they tell you what the different symbols are uh, the monster phase and how that goes uh, what you can do on your turn as a hero and so it's very helpful to have these as you're playing and even with these the first game we had we it wasn't I'm not going to say it wasn't clear enough because we skimmed the rules too fast. So we did have to go back to the rule book the first time we were playing. So just make sure you read the rules and you'll be okay. Um, but we made some assumptions about rules because we're so used to playing games. We're like, okay, an action is pick up one item or something. And this one you can actually pick up everything at a location for one action. So you could pick up a huge pile of items all at once. And we were delaying ourselves by <laughs> spending one action at a time to pick up one item which was terrible um, but that was all our mistake because we just didn't pay attention to the the way it read so we have the this white good deck these are for the players to essentially have during the game to pick up and use and they have special abilities for the players so in this one, it says, choose one, place the wolfman in any space or move any monster three spaces. And you can play during any hero phase. So some of these cards you can actually play on someone else's turn. And so y'all can plan together, be like, oh, I have this card that lets us move the wolfman because maybe he's too close to us or something. So and sometimes we're trying to avoid the, vil the, the monsters and sometimes we're trying to get near them. So you play those to your strengths and how you need those played. And I believe, I don't know if there's any repeats in this. I think they're all different. Are they all different? Uh, maybe not. I'm seeing a couple of repeats. But they each have some slightly different effects, uh, be it moving different players, different types of monsters, um, be it drawing more items and such. And then these are the monster uh, cards. So these help dictate what the monsters do on their turn. So essentially every time a hero takes a turn, at the end of their turn, a monster take, a monster card gets drawn. So you would draw a card. It's going to kind of talk about, give you some special words, just kind of for storytelling and theme. And then it has the icons across the bottom. So it's basically indicating certain monsters that can move. Sometimes they will be in the game sometimes they won't be in the game and then like there's always the fire one which is kind of basically the the one that's you could say uh the one that's the angriest or the one that is most likely to move or on the prowl to do something to the players and then there's numbers regarding the number of dice and their movement and such as well so as you can see they have different background colors to help you kind of tell like who they might go with it's so, like this is like story like the base of the car, the main part of the card talks about dracula but then the bottom talks about some other characters doing stuff so there's a good variety of what happens who does what and some sometimes 
some of the effects just don't trigger because of the monsters not being in the game. Because even though you have all these monsters, you select so many to play with in the game to kind of set your difficulty level. Here's Frankenstein's the uh, Bride of Franken and the monster. Uh, but yeah, so there's a lot of great artwork in this as well on both on the cards itself, on the items, on the characters, and so it does come with a cloth, a simple cloth bag, drawstring bag, for all the items to go into, which is great for both storage and for gameplay itself and I realized that I need to fix the camera real quick it is doing some adjustment stuff I don't like I don't need it to change there we go let's look and see if it does it again okay yeah you know, it, it doesn't wash itself out now when I show something um, and next up in the box we have our monster, big monster cards. Uh, you can, not quite boards because they're still, I'm just on printed more of a paper. How many people did, uh, did I play this with? We played at, I'm trying to make sure I remember this correctly. It was three of us playing and I believe we played against three monsters uh, let's see, we played against Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, and the Invisible Man. So it was, it was kind of a, a medium weight game. Not the hardest, not the easiest. Um, it was more that we misread a couple of the rules, did a few things wrong, that our first game just went downhill fast. But once we figured out the rules, we it's a very well-balanced game, especially at the mid-weight, at the mid-level difficulty. So if you go really hard, you're gonna have a, you're definitely gonna have to push yourself to get it right. Easy, you you have extra rounds to deal with it. Uh, but yeah, it does play one to five. Okay, and then so let's show off some of these monster, uh, kind of boards, kind of cards, just because of how big they are. Like as you can see, they are big and long. They take up a decent amount of the box, but they have a lot of information on them and then they have room to store parts on. So let me do this. We'll zoom out a little bit. So like, so this one's for Dracula at the top. Has, has a big space for artwork. Uh, it kind of tells you what happens when certain symbols appear on the, the monster cards, on the dice how you actually defeat him because it talks about certain colors and item numbers that you need but at the beginning of the game it tells you how to set up but the great thing about these cards for the for the back that talks about setup all of the backs are the same so no matter which monsters you're playing with you can use a different monster you're not using to go to verify the setup So we have the Dracula one, we have the mummy, and each of these get defeated in slightly different ways. Like Dracula, he has four coffins around the board at different locations, and you basically have to destroy them with the red items, and then you need yellow to directly attack Dracula, wherever he is. Uh, the mummy, which I've not played with yet, it's more you're collecting the scarabs, or you're moving them, Okay, so you're moving scarabs around. I believe the scarabs have numbers on them. So as you can see, there's specific numbers on them. But at the beginning, they're probably set up in a specific or random way. And so by moving them, you're trying to order them into their correct location before you can defeat the mummy. So it's more of a puzzly aspect. Think of an old school, like 15 puzzle. You're moving the pieces around. And then next up, we had the uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. On this one, uh, there's a special piece that starts here, and you're turning in items to, sh to advance it forward along 
the path. Um, it's essentially like a boat. You're trying to get to the end of the lair where you can defeat him and f actually find him. Um, Invisible Man. It basically talks about uh, collecting proof of his existence. And so at, at the precinct, like you're basically turning in clues. Um, and then, so once there's enough clues to figure out who he is, where he's from type thing, kind of, it tries to integrate a little bit of the story of his background. Then you can defeat him. You have the Wolfman. Of course, even more great art. Uh, but it talks about the laboratory placing. So this is more blue and blue and red focused as opposed to like the red, uh, the red and yellow from Dracula. So depending on how you put certain monsters together to play against, they may balance well together because you need a lot of different colors and you can pick up the different colors as they come out. Or if they all need the exact same color, you may run out of that color faster and then kind of have to figure out how you're going to use them better. And then, of course, we have Frankenstein and the Bride. And there's, um, it looks like they have dials. I've not played against them, so I don't know the exact mechanic for the dial. But it looks like they have, they have these dials that kind of set at certain levels. And then you're using the items to of certain colors to change their, the dial on them. And I would assume their strength or the number number on the dial has to be at a certain level before you can attack them. Yeah, so it says if both dials sh uh, show the monster's faces, they're defeated, otherwise increased. Yeah, so like there's certain things that when monsters meet and, or move across the board, they can trigger certain effects, and that board talks about that as well. Um, yeah, let's go to the main board real quick. I know I've kind of briefly mentioned it, um, but we'll hit into the details again. This board is basically the whole town. Each of these circle spaces, the majority of them have names. A couple do not, but they are locations that you move to and from and through. And that as these items are getting drawn, you're going to pull it out and be like, oh, that one says the institution or the, the institute, sorry. And so that item is going to get placed down here. Maybe you're out here and you're going to spend some actions to move and then pick it up. And then you'll be able to turn that item in at a certain location, depending on the monster you're playing against. Up here, we essentially have a death meter, per se. Um, if you, because the monsters end up attacking you. Items can be used to slow down those attacks, but if you don't have enough items, or you don't want to lose those items, specifically, you might choose, uh, you might end up losing lives during the game either your own or villagers lives if you get too high on the death track game over immediately and that was one of the ways we lost because we were a little too slow in doing things and we were losing members either from not picking up enough items or protecting the villagers so that can be an issue that does have a couple of the water spaces those are primarily used by the creature from the black lagoon Typically, villagers cannot move into the water spaces. So, say to get across town, you're going to have to go use the bridges and move through that. Uh, and then last but not least... Oh, it's just a piece of cardboard. Punch piece. Last but not least, we have the insert in the box. This one is pretty simple. Uh basic and straightforward and that it's just folded cardboard but it does work well for what it is it has the spot for cards has a spot for the larger stuff like these bigger cards that fit well in it so they don't move around they don't hit other things you have a spot for it to put the minis here or up here um like you could put these boards here uh, they don't fit perfectly there so you might end up stacking them in here but then again, remember a lot of these things came in some Ziploc bags. Or you can get more Ziplocs. So you can have some of the looser components in this. And then the board fit right on top, protecting it all and keeping it from spilling. So in that case, I like the simplicity and 
how well this type of insert works when done right like this. I've seen some cardboard inserts that are not a thick enough cardboard, like this cardboard is actually thick enough and there's enough folds in it, it's not going to bend and break and spill everything back together if you keep it stored on its side. Uh, kind of like you see a lot of my games are stored on them side and so I want a decent enough option that pieces won't just fall back together and mix. So that is all that came in this box. Um, I can show off any of the cards or anything else you want me to. Uh, feel free to ask. It's, uh, it's sort of but not exactly like Eldritch Horror. Um, I've not played Eldritch Horror, so I don't know for sure. I know a little bit about the game and that there's kind of some exploration, uh, defeating monsters as they come out. Um, but this one, the monsters are out at the beginning of the game. You know exactly which ones you're dealing with. You, you know exactly where they are, are at all times. You know what it requires to defeat them. Um, so like the table space you need is dependent on how many monsters you play with. So say you're going to play a super easy game against maybe one or two monsters. You need space for the board. Um, let's move the box real quick. So that you don't need that on the table. And then space for basically two of these cards. And places to put the ducks. Now, if you want to play with more monsters, of course, you need to be able to lay out these monster cards across the table. Um, but as far as, like, it looks like a lot of components, but they work really well together. There's, like, all of these items go into the bag. Most of that stuff is on the board or just off to the side of it. And it plays very smoothly. Like, once we got the rules down, it plays in its playtime of about 45 minutes or so. Um, which... I'm not even sure the box says a playtime. Which, granted, that may be because of the difficulty level and how you can change that. Uh, okay, so the box itself says 60 minutes, which is a more than fair assessment. I, it's not one of those ones that it's only 60 minutes if you're great at the game and know all the rules. This is one we learned. Granted, we lost the first game, but that first game was 30 minutes. Our second game was maybe 45 minutes to an hour. And then we played one more game at about an hour. And so even learning the game, you will learn it fast. And so I would say, yes, potentially like Eldritch, but definitely a lot easier. And of course, more than happy to open it and show off the game. I'm, I'm glad you were here to be able to learn about it. Hopefully... I showed off enough of the components and answered enough questions to help you decide if it's something you want to get yourself or not. And of course, like I talked about, this will be something I will try to play on stream at some time soon as well, if you want to see it played. Um, if you saw um, the game covered who was in chat earlier, they actually played this on stream, so I don't know if their VOD is still available to watch that played. And so, several other have played it too, and there's videos of it being played online that you can find for sure. So, if it's something you think you would enjoy, I do hope you have a chance to get it and enjoy it with family or friends. Because even though it says tend it up and looks family friendly or can be very family friendly, it works well for adults as well. Because I played it with, we we're all adults and really enjoyed it. A, for the, the monsters and and the theme of that. So you can add it to your list of games to buy used one game stores. Great choice. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, if, if you can get this used, and edit, I'm not sure what it sells for around where you are, but it's for sure something I would recommend getting if you enjoy this style of game and this theme. I'm going to clean it up real quick. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So, Nick, if you're still there and if David's watching, uh, probably won't have time to open the other game for you tonight. So, 45 around you. Yeah, so, so it's kind of up to you what you feel the value of the game is, of course. Um, I'm not going to tell you if 45 is a great price or not because, of course, everyone views the value differently. To, to one family, 
$45 may be a lot to spend on one game. Um, but it's also, to me, it's like, how many times are you going to play it? Who all can you play it with? Is it a one-off game that's, are you paying 30 bucks to play one, something once, or are you playing it? Or kind of like, are you paying that 45 bucks to play this 10 or more times? Because that breaks down to, say, a per game or experience price for, for myself of, okay, that's a lot cheaper than paying to go to a movie or what it used to be like to go to a movie or go out to eat or something like just to me if i'm on the fence about something i i break it down that way but of course you do you and how you value it i can't tell you if it's right for you all i can do is show you what it is um let's see it is about 10 till yeah I probably don't have time to open the other game tonight because I typically on Fridays I do about an hour long stream where I hang out with y'all in chat here open a game or two depending on the timing of how what's all in the box and how much I can find, uh, talk about uh, Yeah, uh, what do you have planned for this weekend? Are you playing anything special, anything new, any old favorites? Or what are your, some of your favorite games? What do you got going on? Always cool to hear about what else, what else everyone likes to play, what they've been doing. Or if you have suggestions on types of games you want to see on stream, I'm always open to hearing that as well. You got your second shot yesterday. Well, congratulations. I hope you're feeling, or you get, so you're feeling a bit off right now. Well, I hope you start to feel better. Looking to play Trigger in if you can. I don't know much about that game. Um, I'd, I'd have to look up to know more about it. Um, is that a soloable game? Is that something you play with others, co-op, competitive, what what kind of um, game mechanics does it use? I feel I've only heard the name, but I don't know much about it yet. So I'm always open to, to learning and hearing more about other games. Uh, you play it as two player, it's competitive, okay. Interesting. Yeah, so as you can see, since I live alone, uh, it's kind of typically solo or big multiplayers for me, typically. So, I, that may be... So, I don't know as many two-player or play as many uh, two-player, if, if that's something that plays more than two players. But, I'll definitely have to look into it. Oh, can play up to four. Okay, so definitely have to look into it then, because my game group is typically four players during the week. So yeah, that was horrified. I hope it was at least informative for you. Let me see if I can look up the game you're talking about real quick and see what I can learn about it. So... So you're playing as a Victorian magician, planning tricks and performing act. Interesting. So Victorian steampunk, um, perform dazzling tricks for money and fame. Mechanics are action points, action cue, catch the leader, dice rolling, simultaneous action selection. I enjoy that because that can speed up games. Because it. I have a group where several of us are very thinky and that being simultaneous, that can help speed up turns at least. Definitely looks interesting. I'll definitely have to look more into that and see if even my game group possibly even has it. I got lucky that with my game group, we kind of have 
very minimal overlap in the types of games we own. Like, well, or the games we own are t tend to be different, but the types and the mechanics, we enjoy the same type of stuff. So it kind of really expands what we can play. Because, of course, not everyone can own everything. Okay, so before you play, I had a video. So I'll, I'll have to look that up. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so what else do I got going on? Um, yeah, so probably wrap it up this up in just a few minutes. Uh, I'll, we'll get ready to raid someone. Just kind of spread the, the Twitch love. But let's see. Um, so on Monday nights, I typically stream at 8 p.m. Eastern time where I play a solo game. Sometimes that means something like Cartographers or a Roll and Write of some sort, or you can easily play along at home with your own copy. Or it's something, maybe it'll be like Horrified, like I just opened, or something else where chat can interact with me, suggest the moves I'm making, and help, really help me with the strategy. And so it can feel like we are beating the game together, even though I'm moving the components for everyone. Um, it's something... Twitch streaming in general is something newer I've been doing. Um, for those who follow onto my other channels or who have been following since I started streaming, this week is the first week I've actually got to stream as an affiliate streamer. So I've been really appreciative of everyone who's been following, subscribing, and getting me to this point already. And like I said earlier, the game cupboard was there on Monday for my first affiliate stream. The first one to subscribe because they've been such a big supporter and I really appreciate them and of course I appreciate you being here today and hanging out and chat and talking to me about the games you enjoy and so if you have an idea or something you want to see me play on Monday let me know I still have not decided I typically decide on Saturday or Sunday and then post about it on my Instagram and sometimes on Facebook typically on Sunday what I'll be playing kind of get, always gives everyone about a 24 hour notice um, and then for like these unboxings I also post typically about 24 hours in advance the options I have so I was a little slow yesterday today in that I didn't get posted till this morning but I had these options posted be like hey I'll be looking at these games as an option to unlock uh, unbox tonight so if there's if you, if you want to follow along I'm also jbird underscore the word on on there so you can kind of see what i've been playing what i'm what's coming up and just in general talk about games um but then next friday i will not be do, doing an unboxing stream at this time because i will actually be hanging out with the charity board gamer uh me and him will be doing a big charity stream like i talked about from on Friday, 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., and then Saturday, 10 a.m. to midnight, and Sunday, I think it's like 2 to 6 or something, but we'll, that whole time we'll be str uh, streaming and anything, any supporters, any bits, and we'll also be doing direct do donations direct to the uh, Lacuna Loft, which is updating their name to Cactus Cancer Society which supports kind of, it's kind of, I believe it's the kind of teenage and young adults that deal with cancer and be it whatever support they need, be it even from like a counseling standpoint and stuff like that, because there's so much more that goes into it than just hospital and hospital bills. And so, and that's really important to Chris because his mom dealt with breast cancer and I believe died from it when he was young. So it also helps with families that deal with uh, other members that deal with cancer. So it's really important to him, and so I really wanted to support him in this. So I'll be streaming with him all next weekend instead of being on my own stream. So hopefully you can join and check that out as well. Uh, look forward to seeing all of y'all in chat, and be it then or on this channel again. So I'm going to go find someone we can raid if you have someone in mind that you would like us to jump to 
go say hi to, let me know more than open to suggestions. Let me see who's currently streaming. Um, bear, uh, without suggestions, I know a lot of times I like to raid into Jess of Chickskin Game. Tailwagon Games is always great to go into. Meeple Conrad, Conrad is amazing as well. Uh, I th think I'm thinking Tailwagon Games would be great this week. Last week I got Jess, so I tried to kind of spread the love around to everyone who helped support me because uh, we're such a great community of supporting each other. So let's get Tailwagon Games. Uh, Oh, make sure I spell it right. So, thank you for joining me tonight. I do hope you have a wonderful weekend. And that it's full of games, family, friends, and relaxation. And as always, play games and spread joy.